back. Okay, so where we left off was here when he was like talking about you know his his family. So I wanted to go more in depth just like a little bit with like how he sees his family and who this girl that or this person that he was talking about. So at first I kind of just like wrote right here up to here and it felt like it didn't really connect as well to the the first paragraph so i added this this next few sentences and i, I know there's like run on sentences and stuff but so i added that and before i added this i did write like up to maybe like here maybe here or something like here and then I kind of added this because I added this part. Like I added this part because I added this part. So let me just read it, tell you what I think about it. My father was an able man who never left his fam who never let his family struggle. He did what he could and did what he couldn't just so we could live how we should. My sister was strong and courageous and was nothing like me. She hardly cried and, and always smiled. She would hold me at night when I had terror, terrors, while she waited for mo for mother to comfort me. I was surrounded by by love all around, and I couldn't see it if my eyes were glued open. My mother was a stoic woman, a woman of culture. She would paint sceneries I have dreamt about to this day. She would write poems to put me to sleep, cook the best dishes just so we can eat a less ordinary meal. She made life. She made us. She found my father and gave him purpose. If only I had loved you all then as much as I missed you now, I would not have any regrets with how we left each other's presence. I wouldn't be dreaming of you all now. I know I'm dead, yet I can't bring myself to say it. I can't seem to move on. Remember, remember the time. The time that I cried every night when you all were gone. The time I turned to needles to push out the cold. The time I tried to die just so I can see your soul. So many times you missed out on because you all chose to sleep with the lights on. How could such a simple thing turn my life into a burning building, encasing me in flames just as you? This flame I built on my own with my own two hands. I tightened the belt with my mouth and pushed a needle with the free hand so that my building can burn as fierce as it did, as it did for you. The only problem is I wake up and nothing is new. And I can't cry anymore thinking of you all. I think of her and I feel in you. So here we kind of like, he was like dreaming of his childhood in this paragraph. So I kind of wanted to like go into how he sees those people in his childhood and how it like, like what, essentially what happened that led him to living this life but he's still kind of just like reminiscing about them and, and and how how he like he's not really blaming them but he's still like relating trying to relate what they went through with what he's going and why he's doing it because that's what happened to them and that's how he feels closer to them and how he feels like he can attain those those feelings that he had in childhood with with when he's a grown up now so like like i said when i can't cry anymore think thinking of you all i think of her and i feel on you so now i can like kind of push it to the next person which is what one of the four characters that i i put in this blurb over here in this paragraph so i wanted to like transition it and that before before I wrote this paragraph, I couldn't really transition it very well. It just didn't make sense. So I added that paragraph. Um, she was marvelous, a girl of fourteen, a whole year old, a whole year older than me. She was courageous, spontaneous, spontaneous, funny, and most importantly, she saw me for me. She didn't mind I was timid, that I was scared of bugs and all things in the forest. She would always carry a pocket watch like the movies. She watched with her dad, old devilish women doing daring activities who needed to be functional and astute. That was her, my savior, my muse, the girl I would long for if I had more time. She would never poke fun at me. She would tell me how it, 
how it she would tell me how it it was how it is how how she saw it a straight arrow that never bent backwards always pointing at the target a heart in full swing my heart in full swing as she leaps from tree to tree this backyard of ours felt more grander and new who would have thought it was only three trees <laughs> Leading us to a wonderful world of adventure and fun. Why did I shut you out? Why did I leave you when all you wanted to do was help me? If I had stayed with you, I would have had someone on my side. I just figured we had more time. How foolish of me to think that you wouldn't wait for me. You love me and I see that now. If only I had known what I knew now, I would have confessed it all and stayed with you. I would never have went to summer camp and I could have burned with everyone and felt anew. So... I'm thinking she's like a neighbor and they would like play they would probably have like a shared backyard type of thing and like not really have like a fence or a fence that they could like jump over and since he had like a traumatic incident happen as a young kid and this was like his first love of sorts in like adolescence this is his first love so this is what he like kind of models everything after right so his is like fleeting because he never got to like confess with her because he was more worried about his family burning up and then after that he like shuts down and he couldn't really relate to that his neighbor anymore um i don't think i want to write her as dead more of just like like a Forrest Gump situation where she kind of just moves on and he's still kind of like stuck in that mentality of of his past trauma and how he never dealt with it and how he's dealing with it now and this is like one of like like from that um what was that one movie with the emotions huh no inside out where they had core memory so this would be like one of his core memory and he just can't really move past this because he never tried to tackle that core memory and try to move away from it because he ended up you know losing his life through the addiction so this is kind of him still reminiscing and trying to uh really tackle his life at the very last second and and try to move on peacefully because like like i said in the first episode that people think that like when you die you still have like five min minutes of brain activity so more than likely you can use those five minutes to resolve issues in your in your life and your brain and try to make peace with the world and be able to move on peacefully in like a spiritual sense that's what i would think that people would use those minutes to move on peacefully with their life and people who don't get to move on peacefully become you know like the the ghosts of scary ventral spirits or whatever um yeah now that he's kind of tackled two things i know i didn't like write any of that down it's i would say like that's me inferring and if i was like a reader um i'm trying to think of like what the next two bits could be maybe now that he's tackled his childhood and his adolescent love we could transition to how he grew up like alone and in the foster care system because he's clearly going to be a foster care well i guess he could be put in like an extended family but i think i'll i'll put him in foster care so he could have a little bit more dynamic upbringing and then that's where he could be introduced to maybe the street life and how he got into drugs and the the party scene that he was into so yeah i'll look forward to it for tomorrow see you later